So sets are amazing, but how are they implemented? In this 10th video of this hash table internal series, we take an in-depth look into the implementation of sets using hash tables, popularly called as hash sets. We'll go into the implementation details and performance tuning of sets to see how they are built on top of hash tables having chaining and on hash tables having open addressing. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focused group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack, to designing our own toy load balancer, to Greek buzzes live text commentary, to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. So set is an amazing data structure that keeps track of everything unique. It powers operation like union, intersection and set difference. But the core idea is that it would try to keep everything unique in the set while discard everything redundant. For example, if I'm trying to put apple, ball, cat and dog in my hash set, if I'm trying to insert another apple string in this hash set, it would discard it. So at the end, your set would only hold everything unique. Now, how do we implement this with hash table? So one key thing to note over here that your the keys that we are putting in in the set, they all have application context. For example, I want to store English words in my set, but the hash table understands integers right? because using integers, it is trying to find the perfect slot and place it there. Right? So what happens? It's a two step hash process where first your application keys are hashed into an integer range which is 2 raised to power 32 and from there it is found it is hashed to the location in your hash table so hash table might have limited slots let's say only eight slots right so from this 2 raised to power 32 range it remaps it to one of the slot in your hash table so the first conversion happens from string to integer 32 and from integer 32 to a small integer which would be the index in the hash table and this is where things become interesting because now say multiple application keys can hash to the same location right and then when those keys are placed what we have to do is we cannot just rely on the comparison of the hash key to see if the key exists or not. For example, let's say cat and dog hash to the same location, right? Now, when I'm looking for, let's say dog, I would have to go to the hash table and actually I'll, I've like in almost order when I've reached to that array index, but there I have to do explicitly key check that, hey, is this key really cat or is this key really dog what I'm looking for, right? And this, this comparison is really important and this is expensive also because it depends on the application context. So if you are passing in string, we have to do string matching or we have to do string equa uh, we have to do a string equality check. 
in order to see if the key is exactly cat or dog. So even after you reach to that location, you would have to do a key comparison to find out if your key is the one that you are looking for. Right. So this is really interesting and it changes a lot of things. Now, what do we need to store in the hash table? Right. Up until now in the hash, like what we are trying to store is we are trying to store a key which has an application context. For example, a string of an integer. It could be an object as well. Right. It could be a struct instance. It could be anything. So now what do we have to store in the hash table, actual hash table would be key. Like let's say if I'm implementing it in C, I would store a void star so that I can put, so it has to be a generic type so that I can literally put anything and everything that I want or in there. And apart from that, I should also have a hash key, which is when I pass this key through the hash function, I get a 0 to 2 raised to power 32 hash. I need to store that hash key over here as well. Why? Because computation of hash function uh, sorry, computation of hash from a key is very expensive on the CPU. You do not want to recompute it again and again. So that is where you might or you need to have an integer 32 uh, or you have to have a 32 bit integer where you are storing the hash key that you have computed so that you save time by not doing recomputation and just keeping it handy for you to do a quick check. Right. Another implementation detail. Now here if I am accepting a void star, which means a generic type of object to be stored in my hash table. How would I know that if this key is equal to the key that I'm looking for? For example, cat and dog are placed in the same slot in the hash table. How would I know that when I'm looking for the dog, I went through this index, then that index stores cat. And in the next index, there is dog. I have to do that comparison. I have to do that string comparison to check on what is exactly is the string that I'm looking for is exactly cat or a dog or what it is. Right? I have to do that string equality check, which is where because we are accepting a generic type void star, we have to also accept a comparator function whose job would be given two keys. It would tell if they are equal or not. And your hash table needs to take this while building itself. Right? So as part of your constructor, as part of your setting up your hash table, you need to accept a generic key comparator function whose job would be given to given to uh, keys it would tell if those two keys are same or not and because this depends on the application context its responsibility while setting up the hash table to provide this key comparator function right. so that our hash set implementation becomes generic enough right okay second second implementation detail when we delete a key from the hash table it may be our responsibility to clean them up, right? So for example, if you're, if you're building hash set or a hash table on a, a language that does manual memory management, it might be possible that hey, our hash table is the last reference of the particular key or our hash set is the last reference of our particular key. So then when we delete that key, it might be responsibility of our hash table to delete the reference as well. So an optional thing that we can take as an input is a key destructor function. So whenever we are deleting a key, we would invoke the key destructor function that is provided to us during the initialization for that particular key so that we can do free and other pointer changes if we would need to. So as part of very robust generic hash set implementation, we have to accept a key comparator function and a key destructor function that we would invoke. Now let's take a look at how do we implement hash set on a hash table that uses chaining. Now here we'll go again into the implementation details. So as setup, we would need like overall attributes of your hash set would be the array that it is holding, the array of linked list that it is holding. Second, the size of the array, right? the, the, the total number of elements that you have in the array. Third are the number of keys in the array, like the total number of keys that are placed in the array so that you can uh, trigger resize by measuring load factor and whatnot, then a key comparator function and a key destructor function. A key comparator function that would check the equality of the key and key destructor function would be invoked when we delete the key. Right? Now each node of a linked list would contain three attributes. First is the hash key. Right? 
Second is the key. Like we are placing hash key just to avoid recomputation. Avoid star key that would help us keep any type of key in our hash set. And third is the pointer to the next node. Like a classic linked list node implementation. Okay, implementation detail time. So to have fast inserts, we can just prepend a key at the head of the list. Right, because that's how that will give you order one implementation. So if you are looking for that, you can very quickly do an insert by prepending key at the head of the list. Second, if you just want to have unique keys, then what we need to do, and that's what set does. If you just want to have unique keys, then you have to always check an insert. So before inserting, you need to check if the key exists. If it does not exist, then you, in, then you insert. Otherwise, you discard it. A little slow, but it's good on space. You'll not be wasting any space over here. But you have to keep in mind that this would make your insert a little more expensive than what it needs to be. Right, so up to you on your implementation on how you are trying to drive that. Everything is a trade-off. Right. Now let's take a look at implementation of hash set with hash table having open addressing. So open addressing, we don't use an auxiliary space. We leverage the existing free slots from your from the array that we have. So here hash set would overall have array, number of keys, number of active keys that it has, the number of slots that are used, key comparator function and key destructor function. Very similar to what we had in uh, hash table, uh, hash set implementation with chained hash tables, something very similar. Just over here, we have to keep track of the number of keys, number of active keys and number of use slots because when we do a delete, it has to be a soft delete and not a hard delete. We talked about it in depth in the previous video, right? Because soft delete is important, we need to have two explicit counters on the total number of active keys that are here, total size of the array and total number of used slots. Because our load factor would be dependent on the total number of used slots and not on the total number of active keys, right? Okay, now each struct or each element of this array would be a struct, say slot, which holds four information. First is empty, which tells if the particular slot is empty or not. Second is deleted, which would tell if the slot is soft deleted or not. Third, an int 32 hash key. Fourth, an <coughs> avoid star application key, right? Again, very similar structure, hash key just to avoid recomputation and void star key just to ensure that we can accept any particular type. Okay, time for implementation detail. So, during lookup, insert and delete, when we find a matching hash key, we need to explicitly compare the keys to check for its existence. Right? We have to do that because two application keys can collide to the same location. Just comparing hash keys wouldn't work. That's why comparator function is very, very, very important. Right? And the final implementation detail is your destructor should only be invoked when we are hard deleting the key. Given that in open addressing, Whenever we delete a key, we are doing a soft delete and then during resize, we are doing hard delete. So destructor function needs to be invoked only when we are doing hard delete of the key. Otherwise, dangling pointer, illegal reference and whatnot will crop up. So always when you're doing resizing, then you trigger a hard delete. Otherwise, let the entry be soft deleted. So your resize might get a little more expensive given that we are also invoking the destructor function back then but it is worth it. It would help you save weird bugs that happens in the system. Great. So that's it about implementation of hash set. We went into those micro details of it and the implementation is pretty straightforward. Given that we understand the hash table, the implementation is straightforward, but I wanted to highlight some really interesting uh, micro nuances that we would have to think about when we are implementing hash sets using hash tables, right? So that's it. That's it for this video. If you guys like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you guys like the channel, give this channel a sub. This was the 10th video in the Hashtable internal series and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.